All right, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to just briefly talk about pro forma income statements, balance sheet, or pardon me, in this one we're going to do income statements, pro forma income statements, and we're going to do pro forma balance sheets and pro forma cash flows. Again, they're not that complicated if you understand income statements in a general sense. And of course, in the previous video, we talked about where you get your pro forma assumptions. Here are some examples of base assumptions that you might have. Now you can do this like on an Excel spreadsheet, whatever, but you, you start with some numbers. And of course, you can be asked about where you got those assumptions, but you've already, you can already explain those um, because you've done your scenario building, strategic group, mapping, etc., etc. But let me just give some examples of assumptions that you might have on a pro forma. So here's some income statement assumptions. You know, again, I've got my simple little job, uh, job here, you know, consulting or selling lemonade or whatever it is. And let's say that, you know, in a given year, like next year, because it's pro forma, it's in the future, you know, I say that it's going to be 100. Now I can do this for year X as well. I can say it's going to be 100 this year, 200 next year, you know, whatever. But we're keeping this simple for purposes of illustration. So it's going to be 100 jobs, and I'm going to get paid $10 per job. So all I want to do is come over here to my pro forma income statement, which you can do on Excel or whatever, and I'd say, my revenue from jobs next year will be the number of jobs times the price per job based on what I think it will be and therefore that's why I think my revenue next year will be a thousand dollars right so what you're doing is you're taking something you're using some of these entrepreneurship forecasting tools that we've talked about to come up with some kind of a number and then you're using kind of hard math to kind of solidify your projection that's all you're doing okay same thing, like let's say I want to say what is my cost of goods sold next year, like my fixed cost of goods sold. Well, actually, I actually don't even have to do any math. I've already plugged that in, right? Because fixed cost doesn't change, or at least not based on you, once you've made your assumptions. Let's say I want to talk about my variable costs for next year. Well, I'm going to take my variable cost here, which I've said I think it's going to be 20% because of past trends or industry standards. And all I'm going to do is multiply it okay by the total number of sales and that's how what my variable cost will be it's, a, it's usually about 20 percent of my total revenue okay same thing here if I want to look at operating expenses I think my variable operating expense is about 10 percent and I multiply that times the overall revenue and again you're just adding up the same kinds of calculations that you've already done in your previous pro forma income statement and that will give you a pro forma net profit and you can do this for one Year one, year two, year three. Some people go all the way out to five years. I think for a new firm, you know, do it for three years and then just continue to update it. I think that's the best use of your time versus having a conventional five-year plan. But again, you see, this is pretty easy. Once you've got the income statement down, all you're doing is just add some assumptions, right? And then you're doing the same kind of math again. That's all it is. The only difference is with the income statement, you're usually measuring real data. Here, you're kind of making a, an assessment of what you think it will be. Easy stuff, right? Awesome. So in the next video, we're going to look at a pro forma balance sheet. Hope you enjoyed this video. As usual, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, make sure you subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions. See you in the next video.